land to be record breaking is history. You know, it's happening every uh, 15, 20 years. It's now once a generation and it's historic and it's extreme and it's about man versus an extreme test and that's what draws people in. Well, it's in the nature of humans to explore and achieve. We all, we all do that naturally, whether you, hundreds of years ago, you were an explorer around the world or climbing mountains, everybody wants to set the bar higher. And, and in that respect, we're no different from anyone else. Speed has is, is fascinated people ever since automobiles were invented. You know, if you look back at the history of the, the land speed record, I think the first vehicle that clocked a land speed record, it was something ridiculous like 36 miles an hour or something like that, you know. Richard calls these tombstone projects. We're still 50 50 as to whether that's it's the thing that's going to kill you or it's the thing you're going to put on your gravestone in, in, when you die in your old age. But you know, it's that one of those, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Bloodhound SSC is a land speed record attempt, an engineering adventure to get a man safely through the flying mile and back again at a thousand miles an hour to inspire the next generation of engineers, scientists, technologists to get interested in science and the world around them. And that's our reason for being. No one's ever been there before. A thousand miles an hour is so far from the, the current record that everyone wants to be involved in it. A thousand miles an hour is a quite a big, nice round number, isn't it, you know? A chance to crack a thousand miles an hour is quite a big motivation. Well, this is as cutting edge as you can get at the moment in motorsport. Formula One um, can be an exciting environment. Indeed, it has become more exciting, but at the end of the day, you're going in circles at 200 miles per hour, whereas really, we're the real fast guys. We're going in a straight line at 1,000 miles per hour. So the project's been going for about six or seven years. I've been on the project for six years. The car is attempting to break the world land speed record, but that's not our main goal. Our main goal is inspiring kids to, to enjoy science, to get really keyed up about those sorts of science technology subjects. And the thing that really grabs their attention is a land speed record car. We're a totally open source project. We're making everything available on the internet because we want to show kids the science and the engineering behind what we've done in its entirety. There's only a very few things that are actually secret squirrel on Bloodhound. Some of the engine internals, because they're protected by defence secrecy, but generally on the car, we share everything. We share all the maths. So you can geek out as, as far as just having a quick scan of the website. But if you want to go down to three, four page long equations that, that are at the heart of the computational fluid dynamics, you can. So it, it, it's, it's, it's there and it's open. So in fact, our competitors can see everything that we're doing. But we, we, we share information, you know, it's a very friendly environment and everyone's rooting for everyone else. Now my background's aerospace. I've worked on a lot of defence projects. To actually be able to go home and talk about what you're doing, but actually to do stuff going to my, being in my kids' schools, and my kids go, wow, it's cool, it's dad, you know, he's talking about, you know, I've got a you know, four-year-old through to a seven-year-old. And to see their faces light up when you do school assemblies at different schools and then, as, as a project, it's a fantastic thing to go and actually see the difference stuff like that makes. So there's nurseries on the programme and, and Key Stage 1 and up and then there's going to be people using materials to do their PhDs. Um, our target audience is actually um, kids that haven't decided uh, what they want to do or what they want to be yet that maybe haven't considered life as an engineer or a scientist or a technologist and when they look at Bloodhound it makes them think could I do that and the answer is yes you could. We the grown-ups have made a hell of a mess of this planet both economically and environmentally and quite frankly it's going to take another generation to sort out the mess and I think for me that's the key legacy is the education because at the end of the day the kids that are being educated now I mean some of them are going to pick my care home in the end so you know we want them educated as best as possible. <laughs> The beauty is with it that the rule books are so small, if you like, it's not like F1, so you can do pretty much anything goes. And um, we've got a jet and a rocket, so we've got a Eurofighter Typhoon engine and we've got a hybrid rocket. And those give us around about 100, 133,000 brake horsepower equivalent. We need to pump the fuel for the rocket. So the rocket is a hybrid, so we have a solid fuel grain and then we use an oxidizer, which is high test peroxide. So basically really strong bleach. And you basically pump that bleach um, across the catalyst pack, that breaks down to steam and oxygen. It's the same stuff that the rocket dragsters that run at Centipod. So the, um, the guys at Vanishing Point, they use a peroxide rocket. So we use that to light our main rocket fuel. Um, however, we need quite a lot of peroxide. We get through around about 850 litres in 17 seconds. We pump that at 1200 PSI, so we're getting through 50 kilos a second. That's filling your car up every second at 1200 PSI. 
Now to do that, we need about 650 horsepower. So we have a race car engine that drives that pump. So the only use for that race car engine is to turn a little pump. I mean, our, our naught to 60 times are rubbish. You know, you go to the British Grand Prix and they go, you know, how, what's your naught to 60 times? Actually, our naught to 60 is a bit tricky. At naught to 100, we do in about 15 seconds. And the Veyron does that in seven and a half, seven point nine, 7.9, that sort of time. So we get to, get to 115 seconds. We then go from 100 to 1,000 in 25 seconds. At that point, the Veyron doesn't go quite that fast. But yeah, because we're a thrust car, we accelerate very, very slowly. But when we get to sort of two, 300 miles an hour, 350 miles an hour, we turn the rocket on and the jet engine. At that point, we've got 20 tonnes of thrust. So if at that point, Andy pulled back, the car would go vertically straight up. We've got enough fuel for around about 50 seconds of running, both engines. During those 50 seconds, he'd have accelerated through the sound barrier at 17,000 feet would carry on to 25 and a half thousand feet straight up. Ron Ayres was our chief aerodynamicist. One of his earlier projects was the Bloodhound anti-aircraft missile. There's a surface-to-air missile called Bloodhound used in the 70s, early 80s, it was still around. It's a very, very quick supersonic, high altitude. You know, come the Cold War, it's what's going to be taking out the big Russian bombers. Um, so it just called, as a code name, we just called it Bloodhound. When we came to launch the project in 2008, Richard was very keen that it wasn't called Thrust, basically because that's special, that, that, the team that did Thrust as a C and himself with Thrust 2, he didn't want this to be, to dilute that. Thrust as a C was a land speed record car, its primary goal was to break the sound barrier. Our primary goal is an education project. Thrust as a C was a stepping stone to this car, it's part of the same family. Um, we wouldn't design or approach this car the way we have without understanding Thrust as a C. We have a number of the same team um, and were it not for that car's success, Bloodhound wouldn't exist. The approach that we've taken differently is the target is very significant again, but without that significant leap, without getting to a thousand miles an hour as our target, we wouldn't get the attention of a global audience, we wouldn't get the attention of kids in the UK. You know, it's got to be extreme. I mean, their lives are full of high definition fakery. We're trying to give them some high definition reality. The one thing that we have as a distinct advantage is we're building this car with data in our hands from the last car that ran and the only car that's run supersonically. We got to a stage in 2009, people go, why are the cars, why is the car taking so long? Power and speed and, and things like that, you know, the drag's going up with the square of speed. The power's going up, the power requirement goes up with the cube of speed. So although we're only, only going sort of 250 miles an hour faster than thrust to SSC, the, the amount of drag that has gone up is phenomenal as to, as to the extra power we need to try and get that car going through, that, through the air. It's been a long road to get to this stage where we have basically all of the technology partners we need in place and as a supply chain it's it's about as complicated as it gets. The car is a weird cross between a fast fighter jet, Formula One car, a spaceship, a boat and the reality for us is every time we've got to an area of detail for the car and we've unpeeled it, unpeeled the onion if you like, each onion has been like a mile wide and had its own moon you know there's no there's no easy part of this car um, but when you think he's through the flying mile faster than a high velocity rifle round and the levels of energy are just extreme. So the wheels, you know, are 50,000 radial G. So a bag of sugar at the rim at full speed is the same as an articulated lorry. So there's a huge, these are the hardest working vehicle wheels in human history. We don't have a tyre on it. Tyres tend to fly off wheels at around about 450 miles an hour. But we went through a huge design study of trying to work out how to do that because these are going at 10,500 revs per minute. If you hit a stone, your wheel is, is like somebody shooting at it. We've had a fantastic team in South Africa preparing the desert and the quality of the surface is absolutely outstanding. We worked out what was the biggest thing we would hit and not be worried about, and it's about a marble. So literally they've picked up every stone off the desert that's about the size of a marble or bigger. So that is over 6,000 tonnes of pebbles and rocks have been removed from Hackskeen Pan. That area is very, very um, deprived. It's, it's, there's been almost no investment in that area of South Africa. It's the size of Germany, Northern Cape Province. They didn't get a World Cup stadium during the South African World Cup, and they see this as their World Cup. So it's already, there's an event called um, Kalahari Speed Week, which is running on the edge of the bit of the desert that we're using. They're kind of seeing that this will become the Bonneville of the Southern Hemisphere. A thousand miles an hour, we also get the airspeed record. So no plane has ever flown at this speed at that altitude. Now Andy Green with the fastest human in anything, whether that be spaceship, car, jet fighter, at that altitude though nobody's ever been faster. People go, who else could you use instead of Andy? But the car is designed around Andy. 
So Andy's got the experience, he's the only guy to drive supersonic. He's also a fast jet pilot. He's very much involved in driving that car. He's got throttle pedal, brake pedal, steering wheel. It's, it's a car. People go, well, couldn't you just put a robot in there or have an um, automatic control? You know, how much is Andy actually doing? You need that man in the loop because we don't know what it's going to do. We've got a prediction, but having a guy of his calibre and skill and experience sat in that car, he can react far quicker than a computer can in, in taking all that extra information in. The, the thrust team, since Richard Noble broke it in 83, it's been pretty much an evolution of that group of people. For us, it'd be really nice to see another team come and get a record, and we'd of course go, go and beat it and get it back. But if somebody came out in 2016, 2017 with a 1200 mile an hour car, what well, fantastic. There wasn't a run of Thrust SSC where something they didn't expect uh, didn't happen. Every run had some kind of anomalous event, something they didn't quite expect to foresee. You know, so we know that's going to happen and we're looking forward to the challenges coming. And yeah, it's been a roller coaster up to now, but it's, it's incredibly rewarding. Um, you know, there is no more difficult engineering challenge happening anywhere on the planet. Uh, and if somebody's doing something harder than this, then uh, maybe we can go and work on that after we finish this. But having done Bloodhound, you know, you, can, you could go and build a spacecraft that would be easier than doing this. We've all learnt so much together and we're learning all the time and, and it challenges us on a daily basis and that's, you can't ask more than that to be challenged and rewarded in that way by learning all the time.